turn on your notification bell, you will still get those information you are looking for. Odume Gojuku's last speech as the head of state of the Biafran Republic before leaving for Ivory Coast. That is General Chukwemeka Odume Gojuku. The, the speech he gave before he leaves the Biafra Republic heading to Ivory Coast, yes, in the 1970s. We know the government of Nigeria have tried all to conceal history from the public, from the students, particularly the Nigerian students. You know, so by the time we will continue to exhume these facts and historical statements that will continue to spur our people to greatness, to tell us where we started, where the rain started to beat us, and where we are heading to. Because without the history, it will be very difficult for people to actually appreciate their present, their, their, their present status or where they are at the moment. Now I'm talking about the future. It will also motivate them into the future. Yes. The history makes you to appreciate, uh, to appreciate your present state. And now you have to project into the future. Yes. So in view of that, we'll have to relay some of these things. There are words on marble. There are cynic, evergreen words. Yes. And this is his statement. Odume Gojuku. The head of state and commander-in-chief of the Biafran Republic. Yes. You know there was a country, of course. And so, in the three years of the war, Ojuku said it, necessity gave birth to invention. During those three years of heroic bound, we leapt across the great chasm that suppressed knowledge from know-how. We built rockets and we designed and built our own delivery systems. We guided our rockets, we guided them far, we guided them accurately. For three years, blockaded without hope of import, we maintained all our vehicles. The state extracted and refined petrol, individuals refined petrol in their back gardens. We built and maintained our airports, maintained them under heavy bombardment. Despite the heavy bombardment, we recovered so quickly after each raid that we were able to maintain the record for the busiest airport in the continent of Africa. We spoke to the world through telecommunication system, engineered by local ingenuity. The world had us and spoke back to us. We built a mod car, tanks. We modified aircraft from trainer to fighters, from passenger aircraft to bombers. In the three years of freedom, we had broken the technological barrier. That is a statement of Odume Gujuku before he left of course to code Avery as a hero he was yes and so you know well-trained Oxford graduate you know never seen before in the history of Nigeria that an Oxford trained will enjoy or will enlist in the army that was seen as something of people of low class but he joined first of all he joined the civil service of Nigeria before he joined the army and become the first quartermaster general of the Nigerian army. And so Odume Gujuku fought for his own people and he defended his lineage, the people of the Igbo, the Biafrans. And so before he left, he delivered this speech to his own people, explaining their strength. As someone else was, read, was quoted to have said, an African, not an Igbo man, not a Nigerian even. In Biafra, Africa died. So Ojuku highlighted all these things and what he said. He said, for three years, blockaded without hope of import, hope of import, we maintained all our vehicles. How? The state extracted and refined petrol, individuals refined petrol in their back gardens. And we built and maintained our airports maintain them under heavy bombardment with local materials. Everything was sourced locally. You see, they refined petrol, 
they extracted and find them at the back gardens, at the backyards. They did all these things, even they maintained their airports under heavy bombardment of Nigerian military in collaboration with foreign mercenaries from the United Kingdom, if you like, even from European superpowers and Americas, of course, you know, and that is it. And so, but Biafra, with their God given talent, they withstood these fallacious, you know, foreign superpowers collaborating with the Nigerian government. And so, but one thing is very striking here and remarkable, you see. He said, he said, we maintain the record for the busiest airport in the continent of Africa. You see, he said, despite the heavy bombardment, we recover so quickly and after each raid that we were able to maintain the record for the busiest airport in the continent. So even during that war, the airport, the most busiest airport or the busiest airport in the country, in the whole continent of Africa is in the Biafra. It's in the Biafra. So are these things is to tell us how the how talented the Biafrans were and uh, how organized they were, especially during the war. And this goes a long way to tell us that Nigeria have, you know, denied themselves a lot of goodies by refusing to allow a Biafran, an Igbo man, to become the president of this country. And that is the bane of all the development of Nigeria. That is why the country is one step forward and 20 steps backwards since independence up until this moment, particularly since the Civil War, 1970 up until now. Relegating a region, you know, um, as an race that is well built by God Almighty for technological, you know, advancement in Africa to the background, Nigeria relegated them. That is what they are suffering today because today's wars is being led by technology. Yes, the first wars today, they are being led by technological you know, advancement and prowess. And that's what has been standing out from other countries of the world. And so that's why Biafrans must hold their head high wherever they are and know that one day their own country will come. This dream country will become a reality. It will never be a forage forever. It will be a reality for there was a country, and that country will, you know, reemerge in shortest possible time. And that is what Onyendo is doing, and that's why all of us must queue behind him to make sure that this Biafra of our dream comes to realization. In this Biafra, we make headway. We won't lack technology. We will not beg for refineries that you will continue to, you know, budget billions of dollars to repair, all to no avail, effort in fertility, nothing works. We will not beg for foreigners to come and fix our power, energy, that have devised, it has, you know, actually defied means, defied solution. Today, it is impossible to fix Nigeria power, and nobody can do it the way it stands. These things are things that in Biafra, it will be very easy, and, uh, you know, because we have the technological, you know, imbued capability and ability to deliver on it. And that is it. So these are words and marble. We'll, br we'll bring it so that we will continue to, you know, release on our history and our capacity and capability as a, of, of, as, as a people ordained by God Almighty for greatness. And that greatness must come.